in this video, I'm going to use a bit of viscosity printing, a bit of carborandum, a bit of interesting textures. Uh, so it's overall hybrid print. So a few of you asked me to create a video again about viscosity printing. Viscosity printing is a really complicated technique and it just takes a little bit of practice, but it's brilliant in achieving results, otherwise very difficult to achieve in printing. So in this video, I'm going to create a print which uses um, viscosity printing technique, uh, but as well as using carborandum to achieve some very dark areas in the print and some interesting textures. So this is the print that I ended up with and oh, upside down and um, I'm going to show you how I uh, created these sort of different colors using viscosity printing um, and also using viscosity printing, printing just using rollers on, on, the, on the areas um, and also um, I'm going to show you how I achieved those really dark areas and those very interesting textures using um, just a simple paper doily. So we're going to have a lot of fun and I really hope you enjoy the video and if there's anything else you'd like me to do and demonstrate for you do let me know in the comments and I'll be more than happy to do another video for you. So here is uh, my design. Um, I'm thinking about doing partially viscosity printing on this part so this part will be raised and I'll have two colors of viscosity printing and <clears throat> the background will be really quite dark and will be a bit lower down and I'm hoping a bit of pink might actually come through here uh, to give the design a bit more unity but what I wanted to do is I've transposed it to my iPad and I was playing around with some ideas with background. I wanted to have some interesting patterns in the background and use either uh, some of these paper doilies or even a little bit of lace I've got here. I've also got uh, some sort of kind of lacy tape. Um, it's quite rough texture so that would trap ink quite well could be quite interesting so I might do a mixture I just want to do something interesting in a background I don't want it to be just a plain background and I played around with the idea of it being dark or perhaps light I think light would look better if I make it dark it might be a bit too dark so anyway this is the plan uh, we'll see how it turns out so firstly I'm going to print my design I'm going to flip it horizontally I'm gonna send it to my printer and all I'm going to do now I've got my design printed I'm going to use um, carbonated paper and just draw over it with a pen and transfer my design. Okay, so now I've got my design drawn out. The plan is I'm going to start with the darkest of dark areas. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them out with a Stanley knife and I'm going to fill them with carborandum. So I've got a bit of carborandum. You can use sand, you can use coffee ground ground coffee, old coffee grounds, um, but I quite like the grit of carborandum. It's really good at trapping the ink. So I'm going to start with that and move on to the grey areas and then I'm going to stick on the rest and it's going to be raised because I'm going to use viscosity printing for the raised bits. Okay, so now that I've got all my darkest darks cut out, um, I'm going to apply some glue inside and sprinkle over my carborandum and um, let it dry. 
So I'm going to use wood glue because it's water resistant and it's very strong. I'd like the edges to be quite sharp, so I'm being really careful that I don't get any glue over the edge because I don't want any carburetors to stick anywhere else apart from where I intend it to be. All right, so left it for about 20 minutes. Hopefully most of it would have stuck on nicely. Okay, there are some patches here I left. So I'm gonna have to go over them again. I think quite happy with that there are some bits I'm going to have to go, go over again but that's all right I was expecting that first there's one bit here where I obviously haven't applied enough glue I'm just going to reapply glue and sprinkle carburandum on again. Some of the edges could do with reapplying. All right, so this is hopefully the final carburandum session. I don't want to have to do any more. Yeah, I think that's good. Some went over a little bit, but I can always take care of that later and file it down. Anyway, all good. I've got my darkest of the dark areas. And what I'm going to do is now I'm going to take care of um, the slightly lighter darks. So <clears throat> let's look at my reference sheet. So the areas I'm referring to will be the slightly lighter gray areas so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to simply cut them out so they won't be as um coarse as my darks uh, but they will trap some ink but just not as much so i'm just going to simply peel these areas off And I probably won't score as deep into them as I did with my carburandum. And the reason why I did it so deep is because I wanted the carburandum sort of to to tr be trapped in those in those areas. I wanted it to be quite deep. Um, so here we go. So I'm just going to peel off the upper layer, not as deep as the 
so I'm just peeling off yeah. there we go and I'm going to do that with the rest all right so I peeled off as you can see all the gray areas I made a slight mistake here I peeled this bit off instead of this but that's supposed to be pink but it doesn't really matter because I have a plan for that I'm just going to stick the raised bits on so you'll see I'll, uh, I have a solution so what I'm going to do now is have a think about cutting these shapes up because I want them to be raised for my viscosity print
so I followed my design and I created the very dark areas using carborandum to trap more ink. I peeled off the lighter shades uh, for sort of slightly light, what I'm hoping to be a lighter value. I created a, a pattern outside of my design using a paper doily and I sealed it with glue. So I'm hoping this will work out nicely. And then for the colour part of my design, I um, glued on card because I want it to be raised. So the lightest part, which I will, will be pink and white, or perhaps different colour if I choose to do so at some other point. Um, these are the highest raised areas. And there are two layers of card, so I stuck on one layer of card and then second layer of card on, on my light areas. And these will be um, treated with a hard roller and the ink will be will have um, less viscosity in it. So I will add some linseed oil to it. And then I will choose... A softer roller for the dark pink and this will be normal consistency ink and I will roll over and the light ink will repel these areas so they should only come through onto the lower parts. Now there's one more part of the design that I need to take care of and that is those lines here. So I will just redraw them, just to remind myself where they are, so I'm, I can cut them in, into my design.
All right, so what I'm going to start with is I'm going to apply all over Sepia Hue Ink. And then I'm going to layer on my um, viscosity layers. So I'm going to apply this with paintbrush. Um, just so I can get get it into all the nooks and crannies in, inside my oh. So just to demonstrate, this feels so much smoother, even though it's exposed card, uh, compared to car, car brand. Car brand feels so much rougher. So I'm hoping these will show two different tonal values of sepia in my final print. That's the theory. Just have to find out. So I'm hoping that all is covered. I haven't missed anything. And next step would be just to get the initial top layer off with And now I'm just going to try to rub off a little bit of ink with newsprint just to get that initial layer off. As you can see, you can start seeing the patterns come through. Oof. Hopefully not destroy my design in the process. I have to be very gentle with it. Let's see if I can do a bit of work with Scrim now. I really want to be careful I don't want to take too much off as I really want to see this beautiful doily pattern come through. Gorgeous.
right i think the sepia color is done so uh the next step is trying to get my design in with regards to the the other colors light pink is going to be applied with a hard roller with very little pressure and i'm going to add linseed oil to light pink because when then i will then come in with a softer roller with a darker pink which will be at its normal consistency the lighter less viscous pink will repel the darker pink and the reason why the softer roller is applied because i want the lower parts to be um, covered with the dark pink with the softer roller so harder roller looser ink more raised areas softer roller normal consistency ink with the lower areas that's the theory so i'm just going to mix up my inks so i'm not going to use big rollers for this purpose because i'm just covering small areas and as you can see the roller is big enough to do that so this roller is harder and this roller is a lot softer so i'm going to start off um, with my looser ink all right so i'm going to use madder lake and zinc white there's some linseed reducing oil So not too much, just enough really to reduce the ink somewhat. What we need is really just make sure there is a difference in consistency of both inks. with my harder roller. Now I think I may have a bit too much ink on there, so I'm going to just attempt to roll it out here a little bit. That sounds a little bit better. I will attempt. So I'm pressing only lightly and with a looser ink. So I should just cover pretty much the more raised areas. Which is proving to be the case. Now, unfortunately, my plate is bent a little bit. Um, I'll try to bend it back. Okay, that should. Okay, so it is kind of working.
now let's see the reference sheet are all the bits being covered hmm, not quite this is proving to be a problem here now i'm not fussed if pink gets to other areas i actually want it to in a way as that will unify the design a little bit rules of composition i want that pink to get to other places too and perhaps an element of surprise um could add a bit, add a bit of interest okay yeah the the trouble is here with The, be the, the plate being um, kind of bent a little bit, but not to worry. I quite like some of the pink showing through, so I don't mind that. Um, okay. Now I'm going to apply the dark pink. <laughs> Let's see what we can do. Now here I'll be applying a bit more at pressure. So I'm hoping the light pink will repel. Here we go, and that's actually working. It really is happening. The light pink is repelling the red quite nicely. Look at this beautiful pattern on my roller. I almost want to use it for something else, so I'm going to use a bit of tissue paper to roll it out on. That's awesome, love this. How beautiful. I might use it as a chincolé for something. Okay. So I'm just gonna wipe the brush a little bit more just to get rid of that pink and, and reapply some more ink. So the same treatment will be here. Great. Loving it so far. Perhaps another tissue chincolé for some future designs. Very cool. Right, and lastly, excellent. So now, um, I'm going to wipe some of the bits that I want to be white, but I quite like a little bit of this red and pink to appear, perhaps, kind of rough and ready in other places.
so in order to achieve my white shapes I need to follow my design and probably the best way to do it would be using cotton buds to wipe them Okay, so I'm just getting my press ready for the print. My paper is just drying. I've soaked it in water and it's just hanging up and drying. So I'm just going to create a registration mark to know where I'm going to place my prints. It's going to be around about so here. This is the maximum size really I can get away with on my press. I can't really print anything bigger than that. Okay. I am so excited to see what this will look like. Right, so, paper's ready. I have all my fingers crossed. Come on, it's gotta be good. It has to work. I'm just gonna put some print on top. Lower the blankets down and I'm going to just adjust the press so it's tight enough. I need to be careful though because I have quite a lot of very raised parts and I might end up getting stuck if I'm going to um, tighten it too hard. Anyway, I think this is good. very interesting so here is my final proof print and um, although I'm very happy with the achieving the tonal values different tonal values uh, with carb random and with just um, peeled off card I'm a little bit disappointed with the white areas here. Looks as if the ink doesn't quite reach. Um, which I'm very surprised at because I really thought I pushed the ink in properly to all the areas. So yeah, that is a surprise. Uh, I guess I'll just have to do another run. So on a close inspection, the reason why I think we have these white areas is, in fact, nothing to do with ink. Because as I am looking at the plate, the ink is lodged in perfectly well. But I think what might have happened is we have too many layers. So the deepest, the, the, the distance between the deepest layer and the top layer is too big. So as a result, when I'm running through the press, the paper doesn't quite reach 
to certain areas which are really, really low. And as a result, it's not printing properly. Now, that was a really good lesson to learn. So perhaps in this case, it would be better to cut off, cut out these very high areas and print them separately. That's one option. Um, maybe have the paper a little bit wetter. That's another option. So I'm going to go with a wetter paper and see if that makes any difference. Uh, but I doubt it. Let's try it anyway. Okay, so this is my second attempt. And I have to say, I'm not really sure if it's going to work. What I did is I added more ink. So just a bit more generous with black ink, as you can see. And also, I wasn't so fast about the white areas this time. So I've rolled my pinks and my reds quite generous, generously. And... Um, I just felt that there was a bit too much white on my plate, on my, sorry, on my print. Um, so I've just applied a little bit, possibly too much uh, sepia, firstly, which could uh, result in leakage. So that's the risk. But I'm trying to avoid those white areas that I had in my previous print um, so let's see actually this is quite um, let's use a new loose print I'm a bit worried this is going to be too dirty Fingers really mucky. It's not great because I'm now going to get my paper dirty. So I'm going to now also have my paper a little bit wetter than last time. And the reason why is because I want it to um, be a bit more malleable whatever that's going to work or not I don't know either the loose print it would be nice to get a good print out of it because I spent ages on this plate and it would be super sad if it didn't work come on you've got to work Now the paper's quite wet, so it's probably gonna get a bit sticky. Hmm. Okay. A bit better, not as many of those white marks as I had last time, so I'm more happy with this one. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to cheat. Because I really like this, but because there's nothing I can do about the plate and how it turned out, I'm going to take a marker pen and uh, I'm going to cheat and I'm going to get rid of 
bits that I don't like. The final result with a bit of touch up is actually a success and I really like more the red and pink. Um, the, the roller marks are really cool. Um, and uh, yeah, so who who's to say you can't do a bit of touch up if your plate hasn't quite worked out. And every print is a fantastic lesson to learn for future artwork so i hope you really enjoyed watching this and i hope i've inspired you to experiment and not to be afraid for things to go wrong